Hey everybody, uh, welcome, welcome everyone, welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, Darius Nchauskas. Today is the 30th of May 2023, so you have welcome everyone, welcome to this Tuesday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our uh, risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such. This material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Look, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest. I'll disappear here from that little corner. I'll be back in a few bits. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, um, just... Um, Bear with me one moment here. Yeah, just before we jump into the charts, just a quick mentioning of our Easy Markets uh, website, which you can always check out for more information about us, guys. So do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Uh, we, will always, we will always be happy to assist you with in, in any way. Um, so, guys, now then, let's jump into the charts. Look, um, I think that this session is not going to be, um, let's say, something new because I, I talked a lot yesterday um but it, this is going to be just a quick recap look the u.s market is coming back to uh into action uh today so in the yesterday they were off um and uh yep today we're resuming the trading uh, the trading activity um we'll see how that's going to play out well first of all let me just quickly run through the asian indices what happened there uh nikkei uh did rebound here a little bit i think that right now the main rhetoric is that um biden and mccarthy um kind of uh managed to reach uh this uh deal um which is a tentative one so you know it's okay it's good you know this could this could help the market uh, drive the markets here a little bit maybe to the upside but to be honest um not quite sure i mean if we are actually done with the whole uh you know dead ceiling show well let's wait let's wait a little bit more again the deadline is getting closer um it's the seven, the first of june apparently but um again might be extended or something like that so you know well we'll see how that continues but looking at uh, nikkei here we can see that yes there is a bit of positivity here however as i said before that in order for me to go higher on this one i need to see a push above the current highest point of may um the question for me will this actually stay the highest point of may because we have today and tomorrow still to go through um, and if we do clear this territory, then yes, this 31,670, we clear it, then yes, and this will confirm a forthcoming higher high. For the downside, a drop below this upside line here, taken from the low of the 11th of May, would be needed for me. Uh, and then I will consider a larger correction to the downside, because don't forget, we're still uh, trading above this upside line, so any throwback um, towards it uh, could be classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of buying. SX200, so this one's still the same game plan, not much to say here. I talked about this yesterday. I said to you that as long as we stay above this 7,215 territory, then yes, there is a chance for this one to move back up towards this downside line. Um, for now, that's the only thing that I'm aiming for, as long as we remain below the downside line. Um, if we do clear that downside line, yes, this is where a few more buyers could step in, but we'll, we'll take it from there once we get that breakout. For the downside, I would like to see a drop below the 7,131 territory. As you can see here, a very conservative approach. So once I get the clearance of that one, then yes, I will go a little bit lower. Uh, S, uh, China 50. Uh, yeah, China 50. Uh, looking at the picture here, so far so good. I talked about this one and basically, yes, I said to you that if we do drop below that 12,600 territory and we stay below it, then yes, I'll go further south. Well, I am aiming further south, to be honest. Ideally, I'm targeting this territory near the uh, psychological 12,000 mark. But um, look, maybe, 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 just maybe we could see maybe a test of this little territory right here. Um, this uh, 12,237. Look, for now, probably let me just draw the arrow up until here. This is what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna aim for. Initially, this uh, inside swing high of the 29th of November. And then we will kind of go from there. 
Um, in order for me to consider the upside scenario, a break of this downside line is needed. And then maybe we'll try to seek maybe a better area of uh, a level of resistance or something like that. Now, NASDAQ 100. So, again, something that I'm going to be keeping close eye on today as the US resumes its trading today. Um, look, it's like I said, yes, the positivity, there is some positivity right now that, you know, like, oh, you know, the debt ceiling, that there is a, uh, uh, a, uh, a tentative debt ceiling agree agreement. And, you know, the market is like, yay. Uh, but will it actually be yay or will it be nay? Um, at the end of the day. Um, so for now, let's put it this way. I'm going to take a very like uh, a simplistic approach on this one, if I may say that. Um, as long as we stay below above this above above this 61.80 percent uh, 61.8 percent retracement on the Fibonacci, uh, which I've already mentioned several times, this one this one's drawn from the highest point of November of 2021 and the to the lowest point of October 2022. Um, so yeah, we we've tested that 61.8 perfectly. If we continue to trade above it, then yes, I'll go further north, where my next targets targets will be the 14,642 and 725 levels, approximately around there. Uh, for the downside, if in order, let's say, to get more comfortable with, let's, or not more, but in general, to get comfortable with the downside, a break of this upside line would be needed. And I get it. We're missing out on a bit of territory right here. Well, look, the way we could play this one out is to draw a Fibonacci within the Fibonacci. Um, there we go. So... Let's put it this way. So if we do slide back below below that 61.8%, uh, yes, we could see a, a retracement back down here. Then I'm going to target this 23.6% retracement on this smaller Fibonacci. Uh, if that gets cleared, now that's where it could become a little bit more interesting for a few more sellers. And then, yes, we could go slowly uh, to the downside here, like towards aiming for that 38.2, then for the 50 and so on and so on. Um, not very close to the 50% on the bigger one here, but, you know, uh, we'll take what we have. Um, but for now, the fact that we are still hanging above that 61.8, that, of course, uh, kind of gives that uh, better um, view on, or how to say it, like not better view, but more probability for some upside, you know. Uh, let's see, let's see if that's going to be the case. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Oh, by the way, today, guys, we do have one economic data, uh, data uh, number, which probably better to keep an eye on as the CB consumer confidence number. So, yeah, uh, so that's the conference board, consumer uh, conference board, consumer confidence um so yeah it measures the level of the level of consumer confidence in the in, in economic activity so uh that's something to you know keep in mind because again i will go back to my favorite fed watch tool and look at this beauty so we're still hanging above not even like you know moving downwards or anything like we're just hanging above that 50 percent probability for a rate hike in june meeting um but look Anything can change still. We still have a bunch of economic data, you know, data sets to come out. So just be careful. It might not stay like this. It might, you know, we still have until, until the 14th of June. We have around, what, 16 days, something like that. So um, just kind of, I would say, be cautious for now. And uh, just, like I said, go slowly. And I think that the market will do the same. I think that the market will also try to, you know, okay, it will have its volatility moments when, We'll have, you know, uh, unemployment coming out uh, tomorrow, not tomorrow, on Friday. Uh, we'll have the ISM, ISM, num ISM manufacturing PMI numbers. So, so yeah, um, look, uh, on Thursday, that's going to be, uh, yeah, look, for now, I would say just take a simplistic approach and, uh, you know, have your stop losses in place. Risk only what you can afford to lose and everything will be fine. Um, for now, my scenarios here are on the on Dow are these. Uh, so for that, for example, the downsides, uh, the upside scenarios um, on a break of this downside line, then yes, also maybe a push above uh, the EMAs here, the 50 and the 100 day EMA. If we can get that, then yes, great, more buyers could join in. For the downside, a drop below the 33,000 mark would be required. 
Uh, the S&P 500, guys, uh, also quite interesting and I would say quite bullish as well. Look, we're still above this highlighted zone. Not really, we're just kind of bang on in this highlight in this highlighted zone. Um, look, if we do push um, above that 4,227 territory, yes, I will get a little bit more excited with the upside. I'll go further north. Um, if we do fall below the 4,175 territory, then yes, I will consider a bit of a retracement here, um, especially if it falls back below the 50-day EMA. So this is a very simplistic approach. I mean, I talked about this yesterday a lot. So um, let's see how this is going to play out. Uh, the German index, DAX, um, looking at the picture here, um, you can see that um, we are still, <laughs> this is the interesting bit that we're getting nice resistance near this hurdle, this 16,063 territory, which I talked about previously. And that was acting as a nice uh, upper side of the range here where we were previously in. So then we broke out of it, we pushed higher, we found resistance near the 16,374, we reversed back down, we fell back into the range, and it's kind of the same scenario again. But I will repeat myself, I think that, look, if we do start moving sideways here for a little bit, maybe this could be forming a nice um, head and shoulders pattern, maybe a complex head and shoulders pattern. But Let's wait and see. Well, like I said, if it starts moving sideways here, then I'm kind of going to be leaning towards the downside, to be honest. Maybe. Um, and I think that, look, for today and tomorrow, I think that the DAX might stay like this. Why? Because it's going to form a beautiful, nice, um, a beautiful, nice doji here. So let's see if that's going to be the case. And if that's the case, then look, guys, if... To follow the potential idea, my, my idea here, maybe we could be seeing here an, something like a double, a double top forming, or we have, let's say, the second top is getting formed. If let's say this starts moving lower, but again, for that scenario, for a double top, we would need to see a break of this mm, so-called neckline here, um, and again, that's quite a big territory to miss. So maybe. A bit of a gamble can be taken. However, do not exclude a, mm, a scenario like this. For example, let's say it stays like this for May. For the May, for May here, uh, this candle stays like this, uh, like a uh, like a doji here, like this one, right? This is a monthly candle, by the way. If I'm, if if somebody's just tuning in right now, um, if um, if this stays like this, and let's say we get some sort of big volatility, big jump arounds in in June, for example, you know, let, let's say it could what it could do, it could you know push higher, go for a new all-time high, maybe hit this um, upper side of the potential range idea or rising channel idea that I've mentioned before here, test the upper side here, and then by the end of the month start selling off. And if that happens, now that could be a bit of a a crazy moment here for the uh, for the market, but look, this is just a very very far idea. I mean, it might not work out, but just like I do like these crazy ideas sometimes because again, sometimes they do work out. So I rather run it by you, you know, and kind of give it to you than not, you know, not mention it at all. But um, and then you're everybody's surprised why some certain things are happening. But anyway, coming back to this, coming back to the daily look for now, I am just observing this uh, price action here while we're stuck here in between these two in, in between these two levels. I'm just going to like I said, I'm just going to observe the price action, the FTSE 100. So um, look, uh, this one um, was off yesterday um, and uh, for me, I've mentioned this index yesterday, basically. So for me, in order to go lower on this, I need to see a drop below the 200-day EMA and below that 7,592 territory, somewhere around here. Um, look, maybe this is a bad level uh, to keep in uh, keep an eye on. Maybe we should stick to something around here. Maybe 7,595 territory could be a good one because it coincides nicely with the 200-day uh, EMA. And if that gets clear, then yes, lower levels could, could be met. With the upside, I'm taking a very conservative approach here, guys, and I'm going to wait for a clearance of this downside line. And if once we get that, then yes, I'll go higher. But ideally, I'm going to be aiming for this territory, the 7,937. 
But uh, I have to mention that I really do like this territory of resistance around that 7,807, um, 13, 14 level, something like that. So around this territory, this could be quite an important area of resistance as well. So basically, long story short, if we do break this downside line, my next target is this uh, territory right here. Let me actually highlight it for our future reference. Um, there we go. There we go. So yeah, there we go. That's the one that I'm going to be aiming for. Um, and then we'll, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, US dollar index. Uh, US dollar index. Just bear with me one moment. Um, look, I talked about this one yesterday and I said to you, while we're still trading above this upside line, uh, taken from the low of the uh, 10th of May, um, I'm going to, yes, I'm going to stick to the upside, and especially if we also push up this 104.25 territory. And look at this, we push nicely above it. My next target is the 104.72, something like that, around the around this area. It's near the highest point of, of uh, or near the high of the 15th of March. So if we do, um, if we do, yeah, if we do continue to trade above the upside line, above that 104.25 territory, then yes, um, more higher, uh, more upside here is possible. Now for the downside. Now I I know I talked about this um, this territory right here, and I'm still gonna talk about it. And uh, look, I mean this. I think that this zone here could be quite an important one. Uh, let me just put the highlighter here. So. In general, if we do fall below that zone, I will get a little bit more excited with the downside. But um, of course, of course, if we do start breaking this upside line, that's where, yes, more buyers could join in and uh, potentially we could see, you know, a drift to the downside. So long story short, I will consider a down move here in the short run if we do break this upside line. Yes, but only up until um, up until this 200 day EMA. Uh, why is it like this? Oh, my colleague keeps changing this uh, coloring, <laughs> and we always every more every time we have this little battle. You know, once we log, log in into our uh, Easy Markets account, and yeah, uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, eh, well, at least it's more fun this way. Um, yeah, basically, long story short, guys, uh, for US dollar index, eh, like I said, yeah, from the shorter term perspective, if we do break this upside line, then yes. Potentially more sellers here could join in and uh, we could then uh, take it from there. Um, for now, I'm leaning towards the upside. So let's see how this is going to play out. Now, gold, guys, gold. OK, this is yeah, this is quite interesting. Um, we are drifting to the downside, further downside, and we're breaking this upside line. So the question is, can we stay here below this ups uh, below this upside line? If we can, then yes, as I, I'll stick to my guns and I'll aim lower. I'll aim for this uh, 200 day EMA and maybe which is not far actually from that psychological 1900 zone. So this is going to be quite an interesting moment. Can we reach that? Um, 1900 zone. Well, to be honest, I would like to see that. I would really, really like to see that because this could be fun. Because look, we've tested these, you know, these radical moves here. We had these radical moves here, um, and we've uh, we 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 tested the 2081 zone here on my on my chart. So everything looked very, very positive. And look, in general. Uh, I'm a contrarian, right? I mean, I, I don't believe um, in what everybody else sees, you know, like, or sorry, I, I I know what everybody sees and then kind of, I kind of look at the opposite things. Now, um, again, sometimes works out, sometimes doesn't. So, but, you know, we all take a position of some sort. So, you know, some of us are right, some of us are wrong and probably we're always like, you know, spread out equally. So look, for now, I, for me, this idea that I talked about previously, when I said to you that uh, whenever, when we when we were trading lower, we, I, draw, I have drawn this uh, downside line. And then I said to you, look, 
If we do fall below the uh, 2000 mark, I'll go to the downside. Yes, then I'll keep an eye on that 1977 territory and look at how well it played out. And then we had a bit of a range here. And then I said, look, I'm going to target that 1950 territory together with that 1945. And uh, yeah, we and then I said that oh, ideally also I would like to see a test of this upside line. And not only that we saw a test, we also actually broke it. So, you know. Uh, quite an interesting development here could be for the bears. Um, so for now, I would say this way. The fact that we are falling below the subside line, great for the bears. We could see further declines. But if by any chance, uh, let me just grab a line. If by any chance we do come back above this 1936-7, or let's put it 7 here, 1937 territory, and we stay above it, Yes, we would still be fractionally below this upside line, but maybe actually this would be seen as a nice false breakout on a weekly chart. Because if that's the case, then wow, I mean, guys, we could see maybe a bit of a reversal back to the upside. Um, so I'm going to be monitoring this very carefully. We have a very um, volatile, we could have a very volatile week. We have some data sets coming out. So today, like I said, the main one is kind of the... Uh, CB consumer confidence number, but then um, uh, later on this week, for example, tomorrow, um, we will, let me just quickly double check. Um, yeah, the Chinese numbers are coming out, manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMIs um, from the US. We will get the mortgage uh, refinance. No, that's not it. Uh, jolts. There we go. The jolts. How can I forget that one? The jolts job openings. Now that's where it's going to be quite interesting to see what's going to happen there. Um, but yeah, um, look, then we all have uh, some FOMC members speaking. I don't know if they're going to be the big mover or not, but still, you know, we can keep an eye on that. Now, um, look, for now, I would say, and also we have the GDP numbers from Canada. So that's going to be quite an interesting one to watch as well. So long story short, guys, yes, we could see a drift further south here. But if, let's say, somehow it stops somewhere, I don't know, near this 1927 or maybe, you know, and just kind of around the 25 mark or 20. So if it stops there, maybe the bulls could, you know, bring it back to life a little bit. Maybe, you know, we could see a push back up, back above this 1937 territory. So that's what I'm saying. Keep your eyes on that 1937 zone. If we somehow manage to climb back and stay above it, then maybe the bulls are not ready to give up yet. Um, if we do stay below it, then yes, I will continue aiming to the downside silver. Uh, yeah, broadening triangle pattern here, um, somewhat some broadening veg pattern. So, look, I would like to see a um, push above the downside line here of this pattern um, in order to go higher. At the same time, we could get a push above the 100 day EMA and potentially um, more buyers here could join in. A push above the 23.52 57 territory would be ideal. So, uh, but if you're looking for some further declines, guys, then yes, a drop below the uh, this territory. Actually, no, you know what? I'm going to redraw this 22.82. I think I'm going to remove that and I'm going to draw something a little bit more relevant. This one, the 22.95. A nice good drop below that. Yep, will confirm a fourth. Uh, sorry, not it won't confirm yet the forthcoming lower low. No, uh, but it could open the door to those lower levels because it would fall below the 200-day EMA. And then we will kind of go from there, aim, potentially aiming for this lower side of the broadening veg pattern. Um, okay, guys. So, um, actually, you know what? Let me liven up the chat room here. Good morning to everyone. Uh, uh, basically, yeah, I'm trying to kind of liven, uh, liven, live it up a little bit. Um, yeah, there we go. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'll just leave it there. Um, for everybody who's tuning in right now, who's joining in. So, and, oh, by the way, I can see the rockets there. Thank you, guys. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. And we're not even done with the video. You, oh, somebody already put some rockets in there. Fantastic. <laughs> Honestly, this is... Okay, this is making my day. Uh, this is great. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Um, you see, the little thing, little things matter. Little things help uh, to feel more positive. And thank you very much uh, for you know for helping me with that. Um, look, oil. Um, okay, we got some positivity initially you know we, we saw that nice move to the upside then we declined then we tested this lower side of the potential uh, ascending triangle pattern we rebounded from it pushed back up um look um i'm still gonna stick to the same uh, game plan i'm gonna keep an eye on that 74 territory um in order for me to go higher because at the same time would bypass the 50-day ema and so on and so on for the downside i would like to see a drop below this upside line and if we do get a drop below it then yes more sellers could join in so long story short i am looking for some um downside if we break the lower side of this ascending triangle for the upside i need to see a break of the upper side of the triangle as well as long as we remain in this territory i'm just observing the price action just a quick update on bitcoin to be honest i'm gonna spend too much time on this but yesterday i mentioned this one and i said to you look a break of this downside line is needed and uh, not only that, we would need to see it staying above that downside line. Uh, so far, well, we only got a tease. We only got that false breakout. So, you know, doesn't it's not really helpful. It's not even helpful for the bears as well. Because look, for the bears, probably a drop somewhere below this territory would be ideal. Um, some of you might be a little bit on the risky side. And maybe you could start looking at some lower, lower levels from around here already. From around this 27,512 territory or in general the 500 zone um, because at the same time we would fall below the 50-day EMA and uh, yes uh, this could open the door to a slightly lower level so something like this this scenario could be possible um, look this level here um, I, I like it and I don't at the same time because it kind of got violated a few times this 26,550 zone right here uh, probably, you know, the more logic, logical me would be say, hey, Darius, look at the 25,810 zone. That's a little bit more accurate, which uh, my more logical Darius would be correct as well in this one. My more emotional Darius would say, hell, oh, you know what? Let's try starting it from here. You know, this 27,512, you know, maybe we could capture something here. And in a way, you wouldn't be wrong here as well. The only problem in this case, I would say, um, risk management would, would be needed proper. Like, let's say you, you risk something small, something that you can afford to lose, and then try to, you know, go from here lower. If we start clearing this territory, then, you know, you can add another position, and then, you know, you can go further south. But again, uh, of course, stop losses are needed, and probably... This is the point where, let's say, the stop loss should be somewhere maybe around here. There's 28,440. Um, if we clear that one, then, you know, this could open the door towards higher levels. So just kind of keep that in mind. So for now, um, I'm kind of cautiously leaning towards the downside. But for me, the dr that drop below the 27,500 uh, territory, uh, that, uh, yeah, yeah the 27,500 territory would be needed. So, so, so yeah, from here, I would start looking at a little bit lower. Um, Niso 0806, gold pushing up slowly. Um, if you're going from the short-term perspective right now, what we're probably seeing somewhere on a on a five-minute chart or something like you know, even on a 30-minute, okay, it's retracing back up. So, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm keeping an eye on that 1937 territory, which I've mentioned. And uh, if this kind of provides good resistance for now, um, then yes, uh, we could see, you know, a, a move lower here. Um and uh, yeah, then like I said, if we do if we do get a hold up, if this 1937 acts as a good area of resistance, then yes, a little bit uh, more downside here could be possible. However, if we push back above the 1936 ter uh, 1937 territory and stay above it, then yep, maybe this could you know awaken the the bulls a little bit. But um, do you hold any? Do I hold any bitcoins? No, um, no, I don't because mm, well, actually, I just just because. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't because, again, um, I don't know. It's like I don't hold any crypto for now. Uh, maybe later. 
who knows? Uh, maybe if I'll see, you know, it's a good opportunity or something like that. Maybe for somebody right now is a good opportunity. Okay, that's fine, you know. But um, me being a technical analyst, you know, and uh, in general an analyst, uh, I kind of still believe in some more downside, a little bit more downside, maybe towards this territory somewhere around here. But We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Who knows? Nobody knows, honestly, because you just need um, an interesting decision from the SEC and boom, like that's it. You know, this is where it's going to go. So or you need a tweet of some sort. But, you know, uh, for a tweet, you need to be in a different crypto. You need to be in the in Dogecoin for that. So, you know, it doesn't carry any value, but um, it sure is interesting to watch how it how it uh, pl how it works uh because of one person uh ad usd jumping into a few pairs guys mm, look beautiful moment here um this downside line fantastic um downside line taken from the high of the 10th of may i've, I've spoken about this yesterday as well i said to you that look if we're gonna stay somewhere below this downside line uh, maybe below the 0 0.6564, then yes, another decline here could be possible. So far, so good. Um, now, if you, let's say, missed this uh, turn here somewhere, I would say you can, yeah, you can still maybe try to capture this, but the only thing is that probably for me at this point, uh, a drop below the 0 0.6490 territory would be ideal. So this would confirm a forthcoming lower low, and would uh, this is the current lowest point of May, and then, yes, we could see a further decline here. But at this point, um, look, okay, um, if you still want to gamble this one, I would say, that's the only way I can say it, gamble. If you still want to gamble this one, then you probably, you know, if you put to the downside, then of course yeah, you should have a stop loss in place. Because if, let's say, we start breaking this downside line and we start pushing uh, back above this uh, 0 0.6564 territory, now that's where, yep, more buyers could join in and we could see a bit of a, a push to the upside so um for now like i said this is the game plan and uh yeah mm, i'm leaning towards the downside a little bit more um but uh probably maybe a confirmation break below the 0 0.6490 territory would be ideal now let's jump into a few nzd pairs i talked about those recently and uh especially last week when we had some N uh, rbnz news so yeah, look, I mean, so far so good. After we broke this highlighted zone of mine, we are drifting further south. So this 0 0.6085 territory is something that I spoke about previously. I said to you that if we do fall below it, I'll go further south. And uh, my next target will be the 0 0.6061 or uh, the psychological 0 0.60 zone. That's at my ideal scenario. Um, the way you could play this one out is, for example, for example, uh, let me grab a horizontal line. Keep your eyes on the low of the 26th of May. Uh, we're currently resting on it, 0 0.6033. If we do continue to slide here below it, then and we continue to trade below it, let's say, then yes, uh, my next target is the 0 0.60 zone. NZD JPY, uh, this one's also looking a little bit more bearish than bullish. Uh, after we broke the upside line here, uh, we drifted lower. I said to you that I'm going to be aiming for the 50-day EMA, which we managed to reach perfectly. So that's great. And uh, yeah, we cleared. Uh, sorry, we didn't clear yet, but we, it seems like we could clear this one. If we do, then yes, I'll go further south. If we do fall below that 50-day EMA, I'll go further south towards the 100 and the 200-day EMAs. Um, or ideally towards this 83.73 territory right here, marked by the low of the 12th of May. Now then, guys, USD CAD. So USD CAD, beautiful move here. Um, look, I I've mentioned this before, and uh, uh, I've mentioned this. I said to you that when when we were still kind of below this 1.3568, I said to you that if we do clear it and we do break it, then yes, I will go higher. I will only target this area here in between these two levels, and this is what I mentioned in my previous videos. And we reached that because I really don't have a clear level here. Um, okay, maybe somebody could say, but hey, maybe it's this one. But it's now it's clear that it's this one. But before that, it wasn't clear that it's going to be this one. Maybe it's going to be this one. Maybe it's going to be that one. So that's why I had this, um, you know, territory uh, in general. So, okay, 
got, had a nice test here. We had a nice uh, retracement and we had a nice rebound as well from this upside line. So look, um, I would say this way, if you're if you want to go higher on this one, probably wait for a push above this recent high here this um is it the highest point yeah that's the highest point of may so if uh, near the 1.3655 if we do clear that let me just get rid of this one it's a little bit in the way if we do clear that then the next target is the highest point of april um if we do get clearance of that one then yes certainly further upside is possible because a forthcoming higher high will be confirmed but long story short and as long as we remain in this territory here i'm just neutral and, and observing the price action if we do break the upside line and fall below the 1.3568 uh then yes i will con consider a bit of a retracement here towards the 50 and the 100 day emas or even this uh 200 day ema so we'll see how that plays out um sa1z uh morning morning good morning to you too yes i hope uh, i hope in general everybody who's joining in right now and what and you know in general who who has been watching this uh from the beginning i hope you're all having fantastic start of tuesday guys uh, let's see what this day is gonna bring and i want to say one thing that look we're at the end of the month right and um this week in general could be a little bit crazy because we are at the end of the month the uh, traders will be you know just trying to decide where where to close everything and uh um then we'll have straight away the beginning of the week or the, the beginning of the, the beginning of the month at the end of this week um and straight away with the you know job number here from the us so okay you know like okay if you're a volatility guy then a you know, person then you know congratulations this could be a week for you but um look jumping into usdchf um i I've, i'm gonna stick to the same game plan i'm not gonna spend too much time talking about this but basically if we do clear and stay above this 0 0.9063 territory then yes i'll go further north where my next target is the 100 day ema or this 200 day ema for the downside i would like to see a drop somewhere below this 0 0.90 territory um look i will initially start uh aiming lower if we do break this upside line if we do get that break then yes a great um more sellers could join in we could then aim for that 50-day ema if that gets cleared then wonderful even more wonderful than that we will aim for this 0 0.90 territory which for me right now is the kind of the more important level for the downside but hey look uh let's go slowly on this for now it seems like it could be a little bit more positive than negative but anything can change but that's why i have my breakout from here only and from here only i will start getting a little bit more excited with the upside us dollar against the mexican peso just a quick update the reason why i wanted to pick up on this because i talked about it yesterday last week and you know before that um that look i said to you if we fall below the 17.75 territory right here my next target is the 17.54 53 54 zone approximately around here tick beautiful and I, this is what i said i'm not going to aim for this territory the 17.42 um i'm, I'm going to only aim for this zone because this is this could be quite an important one why because if we somehow decide to let's say start pushing back up this here could be the beginning of a nice um a higher low because we have the low here and now it could be the higher low okay will that be the case i'm not i'm i don't have a crystal ball unfortunately um otherwise i would be you know not sitting here i would be sitting somewhere somewhere on the beach and just you know chilling and not doing anything but anyway <laughs> well actually i don't i don't think that i wouldn't be doing anything i would still be doing something but um look for now the game plan is this if um, in general, I would say this way. I'm, I'm finding this good support here. Great. Um, if we if we want to go lower, then certainly a drop below that 17.54 territory would be required. And then yes, we'll aim for this uh, for this lowest point of May. Now for the upside, well, what you can do here is wait for a break of this downside line until we, and as long as we remain below this. Yes, there is still potential for some downside. But um, in order for me to go higher, a break of this downside line is needed. Uh, GBPUSD, so yeah, um, we're stuck. 
we're stuck uh, above the 108 EMA and uh, we are stuck uh, yes also in this little range I would say so let me just zoom in here a little bit so look we're stuck in between the 1.2308 and 1.2392 levels in order for me to go higher a break of this downside line taken from the high of the 10th of may would be needed and also a break of this 50-day ema could be would be needed and also a break of this 1.2392 territory would be required so a lot of ifs a lot of ifs but in general, like I said, I will start looking at some higher levels if we do push above this 1.2392 territory right here. For the downside, I would like to see a drop below the 1.2308, and then I'll, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low, and this could open the door towards that 200-day uh, EMA. And then we will take it from there. Uh, GBP Aussie, uh, look, uh, fantastic move um, here. I would say uh, for now, hmm, for now I'm positive. Uh, for now, I'm positive, but look, I said to you before that I'm kind of considering maybe a bit of a, a bigger retracement here to the downside. Mm, I would, you know what? I think that this is so tricky at this point that uh, probably a bit of a different approach would be needed. Look, I think that I will mark for the upside, I will mark this level, the 1.8978. A nice good pop above it may attract more buyers, and then yes, we could go towards that 1.9037. Look, if we start, uh, you know, if we struggle to overcome this 1.8978, then maybe a bit of a, a bigger retracement here to the downside could be possible towards this upside line taken from the low of the 17th of March. And uh, if we do get that retracement, okay, that's fine. That's still going to be an opportunity for the bulls. But if we start breaking this upside line, then that's where, yes, the opportunity for the bears could come in nicely. GBP and ZD, guys. Um, okay, look, I talked about this one. I have to admit, I was I was a little bit wrong on this one um, because this is unstoppable. This is just one-way traffic. Um, ignore the whole Fibonacci. I, this is what I've drawn yesterday. I said to you that if we do start falling below this 2.04 territory, I will go lower. And I did go lower, but then it's reversed back up. Honestly... I think that it's better to stick to this 2.04 zone as a good support level. So as long as we stay above it, and then yes, I will go further north. My next target is around here, is around here. And yes, so near the 2.0535 level. This could be a nice, very, very nice good target. That's the highest point of February of 2022, or in other words, the highest point of 2022. Let's see if we can reach that. Um, for the downside, well, a drop below this 2.04 territory is required. Then I'm going to keep an eye on the highest point of October of 2022. If we start falling below it, this is where I need to adjust my arrows a little bit. Oh, why did I get rid of that? Um, there we go. If we do, um, if we do start falling below this territory, this 2.03 zone, somewhere around here, Yep, that's where it could open the door towards some lower levels. But for now, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside, towards this uh, target right here, this 2.0535 level. Euro CHF, uh, Euro CHF, uh, beautiful test of the lower side of the falling veg pattern. This is what I talked about yesterday, if you remember, and uh, the day before, or, and on Friday as well. I said to you, look, Yes, it is a falling veg. Yes, it, according to all the TA rules, it's ten, it tends to break to the upside, but only after we get that break of the upper side. While we remain in the pattern, it still could drift lower. And also, I think there's like a, a pattern within the pattern, like a falling veg within a falling veg. Um, so something like this. So look, if you're looking from something a little bit more short, short term, um, this idea, by the way, worked out. Uh, where I said to you that if we do fall below the 0 0.9706, I'm going to aim for the lower side of this uh, bigger uh, falling veg. Fantastic. Good result. Great. I'm happy. Now what's next? Well, so far I can see that the uh, the lower side of the broader veg here is um, still holding, still hold, acting as a good area of support. If we do clear that, then yes, I will go further south, guys. My next target will be the 0 0.94. Oh, sorry, 0 0.9643, something around here. Uh, but if we start rebounding from this and we break the lower, the smaller uh, veg here, um, yes, I will aim for the upper side of the bigger veg. 
And then, yeah, I'll keep an eye on it and see if we can get a breakout. But for now, we're very close. Well, we're cl very close to this um, to this um, lower side of the of the both wedges actually. Um, so let's see if we, if it can continue to hold. If it can, great. We could see a rebound. If it cannot, then I'm going to go lower. Euro GBP, just a quick update on that one as well. We're clearing the lower side here of this range. But again, will this be if a false breakout? Who knows? Uh, at the moment, it seems like no. It seems it seems to be like that more downside could come in. But um, will that be the case actually at the end of this day? Uh, let's wait and see. I think that look for now, I'm leaning towards the downside. But again, very very carefully because again, if this somehow reverses back up and uh, stays above this 0.8670 territory, then yes, we could consider a move to the upside here. And finally, Euro USD, guys. So similar as gold, basically. It's kind of like doing the same thing as gold. So, you know, sometimes you can kind of hedge. Whenever the market is like this, uh, you can try to hedge yourself, you know, with gold and Euro USD, but uh, it doesn't always work out. So, you know, it's something to keep in mind because suddenly, you know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, it's doing the same thing. Let me, let me hedge. And then, you, you know, it starts um starts shifting in the other direction and then everybody gets frustrated so you look or it starts moving actually in the same direction then yes uh um or the no the the opposite the way other way around the opposite directions it starts moving then yeah you get screwed basically a little bit but anyway look for now i would say this for now it looks bearish and the fact that we are, we fell below the 200 day EMA yep that's something that's a little bit on the bearish side um i'm going to stick to the downside for now um i'm going to not going to drag this one way too much lower i'm going to only aim for maybe something around this let me just grab a line going to aim for this little territory right there, the 1.0635, uh, marked by the inside swing uh, high of the 16th of March. It's not also not far from the low of the 20th of March, so good potential target. And uh, then after that, I'll take it from there. So guys, that's it for this session. I really hope you found it useful, and thank you very much for joining in and watching this one till the end. Thank you very much for your comments, for your rockets. I really appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much, and it really means a lot to me, and it really, like I said, thank you for sticking around, and I don't know if you watched this one till the end, or did not, or you just watched you know, what, what you wanted. That's fine as well. That's great. That's okay. Look, if you just tune in just to see you know your instrument because normally i cover these instruments you see the whenever i start the video you see all the instruments that i'm going to go through here on the right um but yeah um if you only tune in you know to to watch your instrument that's fine as well that's okay but in general guys thank you very much for watching i really appreciate that Look, as always, I'm going to finish off with the Niso 0806. Thank you. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, look, as always, I'm going to finish this session by saying the same thing. Look, uh, stay safe. Have your stop losses in place. Uh, you know, don't overtrade. Um, and always risk what you can afford to lose. That's it, guys. And then, you know, remember about risk management. Risk management and consistency, that's... Um, they sound not fun. But, you know, and losing money is also not fun. So just kind of be careful and be cautious, guys. Join me tomorrow morning, as always, 6 o'clock GMT time. For now, have a beautiful trading day. Bye-bye now. Uh-oh, you just broke a digital image cursing us all to seven years of market volatility. Undo by subscribing to our channel.